and I'm going to I'm going to distill this down quite a bit, and I'm going to try to keep it to kind of uh, simple points that are easily thought about. So we're going to have a bunch of important assumptions, and what I can guarantee you is that essentially none of these assumptions will, in truth, be strictly uh, fulfilled. Which is to say, every single one of these assumptions, when we go out and do an inventory, we're probably going to at least bend it, if not break it. Okay? So we have to be careful to use simple methods that are fairly insensitive to bending the assumptions. So this is just like when you learned about uh, t-tests in, in a statistics class. They told you, well, your data need to be normally distributed. Right? Or you know, any, any sort of assumption that goes into a test. A t-test is fairly insensitive to minor deviations from normality. But there's another test for testing equality of variances called the F-test. And F-tests are horribly sensitive to departures from normality. So we need to be thinking about the estimators that we're going to be using in this process and make sure that they're not particularly vulnerable to or sensitive to uh, departures from our assumptions. So the first one is homogeneity of sampling in space. And right away, you know that we're not going to be sampling homogeneously across Corrupt National Park. Okay? The person who invented that had never walked through a, a tropical forest landscape. It's not easy. Right? But we need to bear in mind these things. So what we shouldn't be doing is concentrating our efforts over much in one particular area. And I'm going to show you reasons, reasons why that assumption is important later on. Um, and so a good inventory effort that is aimed at detecting and documenting all of the species present is going to be defining some area Right? We said a place at a point in time. And so it's going to define that area. And then it's going to make an effort to cover as much of that area as is possible. So for example, we're going to Corrupt National Park. Are we going to do an inventory of the birds, herbs, and plants of Corrupt National Park? It's a very big national park. And clearly, our activities are going to be focused right around chimpanzee camp. And we're not going to get up to the northern limits that are a, a couple days walking away from our camp. So, no, we're not talking about an inventory of Corrupt National Park. We're talking about an inventory, perhaps, of the areas within a couple kilometers of chimpanzee camp. Okay? So we need to define that area and then make every effort to sample that area as homogeneously as possible. This is another hard one. Homogeneity of sampling through time. So I said an inventory is defined with respect to place and time. So it will be, you know, an inventory of the birds, herps, and plants near chimpanzee camp in early March of 2015. So that, that at least constrains our definition of time. But we have another problem. The other problem is that we need units of effort through time within our sampling period, within early March 2015. And you say, well, let's just divide time into hours. Right? So we're going to get there on Sunday evening, let's say 5 p.m. So we have 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Each of those is an hour interval. So we've already done it, homogene homogeneity of sampling through time. But 
we all sleep at some point. So right away, maybe between midnight and 6 a.m., nobody's sampling. And even worse, so that, that maybe that's a trivial example, but even worse is, you know, you're gonna go out at, if you're a bird person, 6 a.m., if you're a herp person, like 10 a.m., um, and it's gonna be pretty pleasant. And you're gonna work hard, and you're gonna be out sampling, exploring, and it's gonna get to about 1 p.m., and it's gonna be steamy hot and miserable. And you're gonna start thinking, maybe I'll go back to the camp and take a nap. Oops, right? All of a sudden, we're not ha sampling homogeneously through time. Well now let's, let's be a little bit more practical. Maybe let's coarsen our time intervals and say, okay, I do plan on sleeping during the night at some point and I do plan on not being out from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. during the day. So let's just use days as our unit of effort. So we go out and we spend our first day there's a bunch of records and our second day and there's a bunch of records and our third day but guess what on the third day it starts raining And on the fourth day it doesn't, and on the fifth day it rains. Guess what? Herps and birds, maybe not plants, behave differently when it's raining versus when it isn't. And certainly botanists behave differently when it's raining versus when it isn't. Right? I mean, I, if, if I were Buddhist, I would believe that I was reincarnated from a cat because I hate getting my feet wet. That is my hatred in the field. Um, so my behavior is different even as an ornithologist. And it's not just when it's raining, but the day after when it's miserably muddy. I'm grumpy, right? And I might not do that nice long walk to the other end of the study area. So guess what? Homogeneity of sampling through time is a really hard one. Because even if you make your time intervals homogeneous, 60 minutes each or 24 hours each, those time units may not be comparable. So it is hard. And then we also have the importance of comparability of samples. So even if I've somehow dealt with the homogeneity of sampling across space, and I've somehow dealt with the homogeneity of sampling across time, I still need to be ha doing samples that are comparable. So let's imagine that the HERP team gets to CORUP on Sunday, and the first few days they are just going wild, looking for snakes in the leaf litter and lizards, and then they're down at the stream the next two days, and they're doing all the amphibians, and then maybe the last four days they put in pitfall traps. Uh-oh. Now, we have several days that were leaf litter stuff, and we have several days that were stream stuff, and several days that were pitfall stuff. Those aren't comparable. Those are different ways of sampling. Okay? And by the same token, the bird guys are going to be looking for owls tonight. Anybody know why? <coughs> Full moon, exactly. Okay, that's when there's a, an owl there that's where its voice has apparently not been recorded, and um, full moon is the night that it will be the most active and the most visible. Oops, all of a sudden our sample on the first night is not comparable to our sample on the seventh night when the moon will be smaller 
And instead of being out looking for owls, the bird guys will be sitting in the work tent skinning birds. Okay? So a partial solution to that is to keep separate daily lists for the different ways that you sample. So for example, herp guys. You could keep a daily list for diurnal surveys, a daily list for pitfalls, and a daily list for nocturnal surveys. And bird guys could keep separate lists for mist nets and for observations. Okay? Now, that starts generating complexity. Okay, that start ge starts generating more work and more hours spent on the daily list each night. But that is a step towards comparability of samples. So what we're after kind of with these three um, assumptions is that the ideas the, the idea is that the samples will accumulate knowledge of the flora or fauna in a consistent, comparable way such that we can derive quantitative esti some estimates from those samples. Again, we're trying to, with respect to a place and a time, we're trying to accumulate knowledge in some systematic fashion. Okay, so those are two places, and you go out and you sample, and you can see the species that you're detecting. Which inventory is done? Same number of samples in the two inventories, I think. Yes. So sample number one here detected a rabbit. Sample number one here detected a cow. Sample number two here detected a rabbit. Sample number two detected a dog. Which of the two inventories is done? Or which of the two inventories is more done? I see a finger pointing this way. Why? Say that louder. Yeah, it's because you keep encountering the same species. So essentially, imagine that we go out to Corrup, and I'm picking on the herpers today. They go out and start playing in the leaf litter, and right away they grab one species. It looks like that, so maybe they're not even grabbing herps. And then they go out another several hours and they get another of the same species and another of the same species. And after quite a while, they get a different species, but they keep working and keep working and they don't find anything but those two species. So all the herpers find in hours and hours of work is a bunny rabbit and a kitten. <laughs> 